The first thing you're going to need is a wig. Uh, this wig in particular is the Chibi in 013 Light Blonde from Arda Wigs. The website is arda-wigs.com. It's really an ideal wig to use. I enjoy the color. It's somewhere between the anime and sort of a more natural color, so it's not that kind of obnoxious yellow, but not quite natural. Somewhere, as I said, somewhere in between. So that's the wig I'm going to use. I highly recommend them. You're also going to need a long ponytail clip. You can get it from the web same website. This one is over 40 inches long. It's got a clip as you can see. Uh, we're going to be taking that out later. And you could get two. I only needed one and I'll show you how to part it. The next thing you're going to need is a pick, a pair of scissors, a low heat hot glue gun, and two styrofoam balls. They come in multiple sizes. The one I picked is about a two inch. I accidentally bought some other ones that were smaller. Uh, it's from, I got mine from Michaels. It's Make It Fun. They come in a pack of six. And yeah, here you can see where I decided to get the slightly bigger version. You're also going to need some rubber bands, like little ones like this. You will also need a thread or string that's the same color as your wig and a large needle, like an embroidery needle. You will also be using a curling iron at some point, but that will be way later. I highly recommend also having a very small bowl of ice water, very important stuff, and you'll see why. You need to pin your wig down, it's super important once you get it, and make sure it's pinned at the bottom and at the top. You will need a styrofoam wig head to hold the wig. I got mine at a beauty supply store, like Sally's. You will also probably need a wig holder. I got mine at a beauty supply store as well. They just keep the wigs in place. Um, the bottom of wig heads have little holes in them, so you can put them on the styrofoam wig holder, like that. Super easy, just pops on and stays in place. Mine clamps to a table. I'll show you that in a second. Here it is clamping to the table. It's adjustable, so you can move it around all you want, and that's that. Now, the first thing I did was I decided to rubber band off the ponytail because we're going to be cutting these off. The rubber band just sort of holds it in place while I sew and gives me something to sew with. It, it makes it easier, basically. You put enough space in between your rubber band and the rubber band already on the wig uh, so that you've got an easier time sewing. This is the giant embroidery needle I'm going to use, not giant but large, and the matching color thread. And here I start sewing loops around the ponytail to start off with. So I make sure that it's tight and I start working my way around and keeping the, the thread very tight on it. And then I start sewing through the ponytail piece um, at various increments. So. I'll also work in different ways, like I'll loop around and then just keep sewing it until it's all nice and tight in place. Because the last thing you want is for wig hair to go everywhere, and it probably will, so just kind of accept that's going to happen. Try your best to keep the majority of it together. At this point, I slip the rubber band off, because I don't need it anymore, and when I come towards the end of my thread, I tie it off, and my thread happens to snap here, usually use scissors to cut it, but... You know how it goes. Once that's all done, you're going to cut the ponytail off. You can't really cut the whole thing at once, so I just cut in small layers. Um, be careful not to cut or pull on the ponytail too hard because it can loosen the ponytail on the wig. So just kind of take your time and cut in layers. Once that's done, your wig and ponytail should look like this. It's your loose ponytail. Keep this hair. You're going to use it for later. And that's going to look like that. Everything's still nice in place and still workable. 
you're going to use your hot glue gun. I recommend low heat. This one was a high heat. It was harder to work with. You lose your use your low heat glue gun to kind of glue the end of it to make sure everything sort of stays in place. You can stick your glue gun into the hair end and I kind of push mine all the way in so that the glue melts all the fibers and keeps everything from loosening. I glued it a bit to the, the white part as well just to make sure everything just stays together. It's very important. I glue on it to also help it cool faster because it will drip so be careful of that. And that's what it looks like when it's done. Kind of a solid mass of glue and wig. Now, with the ponytail end, you're basically going to do the same thing that you did to the end of the, the wig where you cut off. Um, I later decided to cut the ponytail in two so you can actually make this into two parts before you glue it together, but that's kind of how your ends are supposed to look. So, that's what it looks like when both are done. And as you can see, I took the one ponytail and I put it to two parts because that's more than enough hair to make your meatball, your odongo out of. Odongo? Odongo. And you're going to use your styrofoam ball. And here I just took a pencil and I basically just pushed it right through the center. Right like that gives you kind of an idea of where your exact center is. And you're going to be hollowing out the ball. I use an X-Acto knife to do this. And it gets really messy, so I highly recommend using a plastic bag underneath it. The first opening is kind of small. It's not as big as where your ponytail is going into. But, so you work on the other end as well. And the other end is going to be much bigger. It's You're basically going to stick these styrofoam balls onto the end of where your ponytail used to be, but now it's kind of a glued knob, to say the least. It's kind of a long process hollowing it out. Make sure it's really hollowed out because there's got to be plenty of room to fit stuff into it. Hair, to be exact. And this process can take a while. Once it's hollowed out, it should look something like this. You can see it's smaller on one end than the other. There's actually kind of a little shelf right on the inside. Um, you're going to take the bigger end and you're going to kind of cut a dip into it. There's a small end, there's the dip you can see. Kind of this little dip. It's so that the ponytail hair from the long ponytail clip can come through and the bun can be more flesh to the wig. So you're just going to make an incision, two incisions, about, uh, I'd say a little bit about close to an inch apart. And then you just kind of cut it out and smooth it out and make sure that it's not too awkward. And now that those are both done and even, please make sure they're even because you wouldn't want more ponytail hair coming out of one end than the other and it would just look weird, so. See, now they both have that edge. Here's where I show you that these are basically going to fit onto the wig like that. Make them a little loose when you initially put them on because you're going to have a lot of hair that's going to come out of the balls and it's going to make them tighter. Now, here's where you use your ponytail end. You're going to, there's the large end and the small end, and this is your ice water I talked about earlier. Very important. It's just cold water works too, you don't have to have ice. You're going to use your low heat hot glue gun. 
you're going to take your ponytail end and you're going to stick it through the small end. It's going to be a little hard so you kind of got to fit it in and it should be pretty snug. You should be able to bounce it a little bit, make sure it doesn't come out. Make sure all the styrofoam bits are out that are loose. And then I kind of build just a little bit of the bottom with hot glue to make sure that everything stayed in place and that it's not going to move. And then I took a little bit of hot glue and I put it around the edge, kind of filled in the holes where the hair wasn't enough to fill in the holes. So do all that and make sure nothing goes anywhere. Try not to get too much on the hair itself. You would regret that a lot later. Next you're going to take very small pieces. This is kind of the important part. You don't want too big of pieces because they don't glue down as well. So you take small strips and you're going to glue them down to the styrofoam ball. And this is where your ice water comes in handy because you're going to get your finger wet and cold and then pat the hair down. Be very careful about this process. Um, I burnt myself like 10 times in the original one because I didn't get the hot or the ice water bad mistake. You're going to cut the hair um, a little bit short, just enough that you can tuck the rest of the hair into the ball. Again, the very important ice water. And here I'm trying to tuck the hair in. I didn't want to touch the hot glue right away because it was a little too hot. Again, I was using with a high heat hot glue gun. Don't do that. It's harder to, to work with. The low heat hot glue gun should do you well. If you have to use a high hot glue gun, high heat hot glue gun, be very, very careful. And then I took a hairspray. I used Tresemme, the strong, extra strong hold and you kind of spray it down and you pat it down to make sure everything is slick and properly in place and that no loose hairs are going to go anywhere. And then you just kind of glue strip after strip, a little bit at a time. Don't grab too much hair or it's, you're really going to regret it because they just come loose and then it's a pain to deal with. Um, Inevitably, hair is going to fall out of your ponytail because it's hard to keep it all in place. That's okay. I mean, you really don't need a ton of hair to make the Odongo, as you might think. The meatball? The hair bun? Should I call it a hair bun? It's a long process to get it nice. To do both buns, I would say this process took me a couple hours to get it nice looking. And Your first run is a little bit hard. I mean, it's not too hard, obviously, but it's deceivingly difficult to get everything to look pristine. You want to make sure the entire styrofoam ball is covered first. And you'll probably end up with a lot of leftover hair, and that's fine. I'll show you what to do with it once you're done. When you finish covering the entire styrofoam ball, check for holes and make sure you fill the holes with the extra pieces of hair left over. If you don't have extra pieces of hair left over, that's fine too. The rest of the video will be covered in the second part. I had to break it into two parts because it was like uh, half an hour, which is a lot, you know, for one video, and YouTube won't allow it. So, this is part one and part two will be coming out soon slash in the next day and so you'll get to see how to do the rest of it like attach the hair pieces and put the balls on the head and all that good stuff 
and here you can see what it looks like when all the holes are covered. Tune in next time for the rest of the video in part two.